So in this video, we're going to talk about authenticating your domain using DKIM, SPF, and DMARC. And I know that can sound a little bit confusing, but stay with me. I'm going to explain what those are, why you have to do it, and all of those things. And then we're going to walk through how to authenticate and everything's going to be okay. So why do we have to do this? Authenticating your domain helps you with security and deliverability. It also helps you protect your brand's reputation and helps your emails successfully reach someone's inbox. Because without this authentication, there is a high chance that your emails will be blocked or sent to someone's spam inbox. So what changed? Because this hasn't always been a thing, right? So in February of 2024, many email platforms, including Gmail and Yahoo, implemented new rules for bulk senders to cut down on spam emails. Now, this means that you'll need a professional email address on your custom domain in order to authenticate your domain to be compliant with the new rules. So if you've been using a gmail.com, you know, your business name at gmail.com to send your email marketing emails, you're not going to be able to do that anymore without going to the spam box. And if you're using system.io, you will be required to use a professional email address because they're not going to let you use a Gmail, a Yahoo, an AOL, a Hotmail. You're going to have to have a professional email on your domain. So for example, Allison at mybusiness.com. You know, you're going to have to have that custom professional email address or else your emails are going to get blocked and sent to spam. Now you can use a Gmail, but just know that those emails are not going to reach your audience because you cannot authenticate it because you don't own gmail.com. So you cannot edit the DNS on that. So what is required to be compliant with these new rules? Number one, you have to authenticate your domain with DMARC, SPF, and DKIM. Number two, you have to make sure you have an easy unsubscribe button on all of your emails. So if you're trying to hide your unsubscribe button to keep people on your list or you just don't have one at all, you have to have an unsubscribe button on all of your emails. And then lastly, you want to ensure that you're only sending emails to people who want them and people who are on your list so that you can stay below a 0.3% spam rate. As long as you're only sending emails to the people who have signed up for them and you're not downloading illegal lists online or illegally importing lists from somewhere else, then there's a good chance that your people that you're sending emails to are not going to mark you as spam. You're going to be able to stay under that 0.3% spam rate. But if three out of every 1,000 people you're sending an email to are marking your emails as spam, you are going to run into spam issues with future emails. Okay, so let's go into a couple of these terms so I can help you understand what they are. So the first one is DMARC, and it stands for Domain-Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance, okay? And it's a lot of words, but it just means that it's a protocol designed to give you the ability to protect your domain from unauthorized use such as email spoofing and phishing campaigns. There's a lot of bad people out there who want to use your domains and pretend to be you and send emails on your behalf to spam people. DMARC allows you to protect that and make sure that your emails are only coming from you. SPF stands for Sender Policy Framework, and this is another standard that you use to specify the email servers that you're sending emails from, which makes it harder for the fraudsters to spoof the sender information. Again, protecting your brand and making sure that people aren't out to spam others. And then lastly, DKIM stands for Domain Keys Identified Mail. And again, this is an email authentication standard that is necessary to keep your email safe, and it actually verifies that your emails were not altered in transit. So from the time you hit send on your emails to the time they arrive in someone's inbox, the DKIM is going to make sure that nothing happened in between. Okay, so these are just standards that help protect you as a business owner. You don't want people sending emails on your behalf to spam your customers. So these are really important things to do to authenticate that your emails are true and, and valid and they're yours. So we're going to go into those steps now. Please just watch carefully. It is a lengthy process. So just stay with me and we'll go through this together. Okay, so now that we've gone over what domain authentication is, we're going to start by adding our SPF record. And this is a text record. So we're going to hit add record, choose TXT. Your host is going to be at, 
and then your data or your value. So I'm gonna paste all these records down below this video so that you can just copy and paste. But for the SPF record, what you're going to put in is V equals SPF1 space include colon underscore spf.google.com, the little squiggly line and all. Now here's something I want to make a note of. The reason that we do this is because we are sending from Google. Our account was set up through Google Workspace, which is a Google account. Now system.io, based on my conversations with their support team, they automatically do the SPF when you authenticate your domain like we did in the previous video. So you don't have to include the SPF for system.io here. However, if you are sending emails from a different service, if you're using Aweber, if you're using GetResponse, if you're using MailChimp, you will have to also include those domains here because your SPF needs to include everywhere that you plan to send emails from. But System.io includes that automatically, so you do not have to include System.io in this record here. Okay, so the next thing we want to add is our DKIM record. And for this, we're going to need to go to our admin console inside of your Google account. So if you are in your Google account, this is the confirmation email from System.io previously that I've showed you. You're going to click on your initial at the top, click on admin console. And then we're going to go over here to the left. You're going to expand the option that says apps. We're going to go to Google Workspace and we're going to go down to Gmail. And here you're going to see the option that says authenticate email, set up email authentication, DKIM. So we're going to expand that and make sure that the domain you're using is the correct one. And it's going to tell you right here that you are going to have a text record and we need to generate a new record. So we're going to go ahead and get this started in Squarespace. We're going to add another TXT record. Our host is going to be Google dot underscore domain key. And then for the data, this is what we have to generate inside of the page here. So we're going to hit generate new record. Now you have some options here. We're going to keep this at 2048 and we're going to keep this at Google. We're going to hit generate. So it's going to tell you now exactly what you need to put into your Squarespace. You've got the host, which I've copied in there, and then you've got your text record value and you're going to copy all of this. And we're going to paste that in here and we're going to hit save. Okay, so we've got our SPF record and our DKIM record. We need to go back to Google. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit this button here. Now, as you can see, it's going to say that it may take 48 hours for this change to fully propagate. And that's just because it takes a while for the DNS to become populated in no matter what you're putting in there. So even if we hit start authentication, it may not fully authenticate for up to 48 hours. So once you've put your DKIM record in there, you're going to hit this button here. So after you hit start authentication on this button here, if you get a notice with a red text or you get a little red alert down here, that just means you need to wait a little bit longer for your domain to fully propagate. So wait another 15, 30 minutes. It may take up to 48 hours though, like this says here for it to actually fully propagate. But once it does, you will see that it says stop authentication. And that just means your domain is currently authenticating and you are good to go on to the next step. And that is adding your DMARC records. So a tool that we're going to use to actually set up our DMARC record is this one called Easy DMARC and I'll link it down below, but it's just going to help you generate that record. And so what we're going to do is put in our information here. For the policy you want, this is for whether or not you want your potential spam to be quarantined, whether you want it to reject all messages that come across as spam, or if you just want to monitor these messages that look or could be spam without doing anything to them. So you decide whether you want to do that. This right here, the reports send to, this is going to be the email address that all of your DMARC records are sent to. You can put the email address that we just set up here. You are going to receive daily reports to this email address. So if you do not want to receive multiple daily reports for DMARC, then I would suggest maybe using a different email address here.
Sometimes it's probably a good idea if you have a specific email address dedicated to these DMARC records, but that's going to be up to you. So your subdomain policy, that again is going to equate to whether or not you want to monitor quarantine or reject your potential spam. Whether or not you want this to be relaxed or strict, we're going to go relaxed. And your DKIM identifier element, again, relaxed or strict. We're going to keep the reporting interval and the percentage here. And then we're going to, again, failure reporting. We're going to go ahead and put our email address here. And we're going to leave that selected as one. And I'm going to hit generate. Okay, so this is going to show us our record here. And these warnings down below are just telling you that you have your record set to none, which means that it's not going to protect against email spoofing or phishing. Um, if you want your email address to have a stricter policy, you can definitely change that to quarantine or reject. It's just completely up to you what you want to do in that regard. Okay, so we're going to add one last record here and this is for the DMARC. So go ahead and hit add record. For the host, again, I've pasted all this information below this video so you can kind of have a shortcut here, but your host is going to be underscore DMARC. It is going to be a TXT record. And then to get that data, we're going to go back to the easy DMARC generator and grab the data DNS that they have created for us. So that's going to be this right here. So we're going to hit copy, go back to Squarespace. We're going to paste that in there and then we're going to hit save. Okay, so we have our SPF record here, we have our DKIM record, and we have our DMARC record. Now we're going to do one last thing before we're all done, is we're going to use a tool that will help us check to make sure these are right. Okay, so now we're going to check those settings to make sure that everything was put in correctly. So I did refresh the page on my DNS settings, and so you'll see that my SPF, DMARC, and DKIM records are no longer at the bottom of the list, they're somewhere in the middle. But that's okay, the order is specific to however the platform wants to have them in that order. So if you refresh your page and they go to a different location in your list, it's totally okay. So we're going to go back to that DMARC record generator at easydmark.com where we generated our DNS for the DMARC. Now this is a great website because they also have some tools that you can use to validate that you put those records in correctly. So in the top toolbar, if you go to tools, you can see that they have a DMARC record checker, an SPF record check and look up, and then a DKIM record checker. So let's go ahead and just double check all of our records. So first we're going to do this DKIM record checker. You may have to put your domain in here, mine auto filled, and then hit check DKIM. And it's going to let you know that yes, everything that we got out of Google, our admin console is correct. It'll tell you where you got it from, which is correct. Then we're going to go to the SPF record check. Again, mine input the domain automatically, hit check SPF. You can see that it's valid. I only have one email sender because yes, I only put google.com in here. Like I mentioned when we were setting up SPF, if you use a different service to send your emails, other than system.io because system.io does this automatically and you don't need to include system.io here. If you use another service such as Aweber, GetResponse or anything like that, MailChimp, then you will need to also add the underscore SPF dot whatever website you're using and then space and then add Google as well. So you can add as many websites providers inside your SPF record as you need, but we only have the one. So that is correct. And then we're going to lastly check our DMARC. We're going to go up to DMARC record checker. So if yours didn't automatically input, type in your domain here, hit check DMARC. Now, as you can see, my DMARC is valid. Now don't be alarmed by the red here. I'm going to explain what this means. So the easy DMARC reporting is inactive. And that just means that this website, easy DMARC, you can subscribe to their service here where you can put in an email address and they'll help monitor your DMARC. And so this is just telling you that we do not have their email address input into our record here. So they're not monitoring anything for us. So that's inactive. 
And then the domain policy is set to none. So when we set up our DMARC, I decided to just choose none instead of choosing quarantine or reject. And so that's just letting you know that you don't have a policy. And then it's the same for the subdomain policy. It's set to none. If you'd like to change this status in your DMARC record, you can see here when you highlight over, it'll tell you what these do. All you have to do is go back to that DMARC record generator and change the subdomain and policy type. So none is what we have, which just monitors the spam and everything. But if you want it to quarantine emails that could be spam or phishing or, you know, bad emails, you can do that. And if you want to completely reject those emails so that they do not send to anyone at all, you can choose reject as well. So now that we have checked everything, you are good to go. You have authenticated everything. I'm personally really proud of you for getting through this process because it is a difficult and lengthy process, but you should feel very, very accomplished that you were able to do this. Now in the future, going forward, you can help other people and you can set up as many businesses and email campaigns as you need to.